start it off with our very own Tina Mitchell. Wow, I'm just jamming. I love the new, I love the new setup. Good morning, Real Living Northwest Real Tours, and my friend Tina Mitchell here with your Mortgage Minutes. I just want to make a comment on the motivational clip that we heard this morning. I've noticed for me, I mean, it's busy in our day when we're sitting behind our desk, but we do, I know I go out of the office to meet with uh, potential strategic partners and to have coffee, and all of my aha moments, I was just thinking when I was listening to the motivational clip today, I can't think of really of my really big aha moments that haven't taken place when not in my car. So I think my quiet time, crazy or not, but just kind of thinking when our quiet time is, my quiet time is my car. So when I'm driving from appointments, I'm not thinking about anything. It's my time when I'm dreaming. My crystal quotes that you guys are all familiar with on my website, those were actually written, were wrote, the first one that inspired my three quotes was while I was driving, and most of you have heard that story uh, before and how I came up with my personal core practices. So anyway, think of when that time is for you because we're so busy during the day, and that was just an aha moment. Uh, Kiyoki, thank you very much, but I just had that really as my quiet time. When I'm driving, that's when a lot of my ideas come in because I'm just driving. And so I'm relaxed, I'm listening to motivational clips, um, and just getting inspired for whatever is coming up uh, next throughout my day. So thank you uh, very much, Kiyoki. Alrighty, so let's go into the bond market. Good, there's a little bit of green today. Oh my gosh, it's been totally crazy in the last few days uh, with interest rates. It's, I tell my clients, you know, when an, an offer is accepted, you can't lock in an interest rate until an offer is accepted. So I encourage um, uh, with you guys when you have contracts, even if you have a buyer signature and we're working together, get the contracts over to me. If we know that we've got an offer, counter's been accepted or whatever the case may be, get the contract over to me as quickly as possible, like the night before because I need to have that contract to get things locked in. And as soon as the market opens in the morning, I know exactly what's going to happen with interest rates. And it's been crazy. There's been a huge adjustment in interest rates. Now, the, the spin that I'm putting on with my uh, clients is taking a look at a two-year um, history of the bond market. And again, bond, the bonds drop in price, mortgage rates go up, the bonds trading at a higher price, mortgage rates go down. Let's look at a, get a perception here or, or a reality here. Interest rates are unbelievably low if we look at a history over the last two years. But <laughs> the last um, few days have been uh, a little bit challenging. So anyways, um, just shows again if you're in a position to lock in an interest rate, don't gamble. But we did see a little tiny improvement in here. Um, there was some a positive um, employment information that came out that was unexpected. Uh, CoreLogic released um, national foreclosure reports uh, were down, and so just some positive economic news, some things going on with the 10-year um, uh, bonds. I won't go into too much with that because it's kind of a long conversation, and I want to share something else with you this morning. But uh, anyways, that's why there's been some movement in the interest rate market, but it's all still really, really good. Okay, so this morning for my Mortgage Minutes, uh, questions to ask your mortgage professional. So good questions for your clients to come prepared to have a conversation and ask for their mortgage uh, professional. Ask them if they're a banker, broker, just to get a little background, not that this is important, um, but maybe it is to consumer. Maybe it, maybe a client wants to work with a banker. They want to work with somebody that is direct through a bank, like a Wells Fargo or a Bank of America. And if that's important, they need to ask that question. The, what there is is there's a mortgage banker um, or a mortgage broker or something kind of in between, which is your correspondent lending, and that's what I am in Pinnacle Capital. So your mortgage banker directly works through a bank. Correspondent lender is direct to Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Correspondent channel relationships, which means that they have relationships with the major banks that allow corresponding. And then broker, true broker, is somebody that just brokers out to other lenders, which means that they are actually not 
underwriting the loan and they're not drawing the docs either. So it's, I can answer any questions in, in detail with any of you or your clients that have questions on that. Obviously there's a benefit to all three areas because otherwise mortgage professionals would not be in all three areas. Me personally, I find the best service and the, for my clients and the best environment is to be in a correspondent lending relationship. I don't want to be direct to a bank and I don't want to be a, strictly a broker. Uh, but again, that could be a whole of mortgage minutes in itself. How long have they been in the industry? I think this is an important question to ask. Thank goodness nobody was asking me when I first got into the industry because I have no idea how I made it through my first two years. No idea at all. Um, I could, I've got some amazing stories. I flew to um, uh, uh, La Jolla to get documents signed from all of a sudden I had to get a co-signer to come in and save on an FHA loan. I mean, there's just, it's a really, really hard business. So if it's important to them not to, you know, you want to give everybody a chance, obviously, but I don't know that I would want my, uh, my finances with somebody that doesn't have some experience in the industry. So if that's important to your clients, they need to ask the question. Uh, what's their availability? Again, these things, maybe it's important to your clients, maybe it's not important, but it's things for them to be thinking about of having a conversation with their potential mortgage consultant when they're doing interviews. If it's important to them, important to you representing them on the real estate side that they're accessible off business hours, they need to ask that question. I have a lot of respect for people that do not work the off business hours, and that's amazing um, to be able to commit to your family and your children and not to take calls on the weekends and not to have meetings at 8 and 9 o'clock at night. For me personally, I enjoy what I'm doing. I don't have little kids at, at home, as you guys know, and, so, and I do a lot of web meetings. So when I'm doing a web meeting at 9 o'clock at night, I'm hopping from the living room spending time with my husband into the private office in my house. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, I do a lot of web meetings over the weekend. I do my limit is I won't come in and do face-to-face -face meetings on the weekend. I don't come to my office on the weekend at all, but I do a lot of back-to-back -back web meetings on the weekend. And my last face-to-face -face appointment I'll take is at 6 o'clock at night. So that gives me an opportunity. If I want to leave the office by 7 at the latest, I can do that. And then I can go home and have 8 and 9 o'clock web meetings, which are, by the way, my 8 o'clock web meeting is the most popular. Oops, sorry, my phone's ringing. Uh, most popular, I forgot to put it on Do Not Disturb. Uh, so most popular time that I have is my 8 o'clock web meeting and my weekends. Does your company underwrite the loan and draw loan documents? It's important, I think, to know this because it's a level of uh, control during the closing process to find out where the loan is underwritten and where the documents are drawn. And really, that's going to be effective for somebody that's a true broker. Um, so it can uh, cause delays in the, in the closing process. Where's operations located? Not to say that it's bad if it's not located in your office. I like the fact that my processor is here in my office with my team. It allows me to have a pipeline review every morning. I'm in the pipeline review with my loan coordinator, Lisa and Jamie, uh, my processor, for the first five minutes to, just to make sure everything's on track for the day. Uh, my underwriter is not in office. My funder's not in office, but they're down the street. So just having that conversation um, and finding out the confidence that the your mortgage consultant has uh, where their team is located. Personally, uh, having a processor that's out of state is not something that I would be excited about. Um, but again, just a, a question to, uh, to ask. How do interest rates move? It's a really good question because that's going to tell you whether your mortgage consultant understands the basics of doing mortgages. I would think it would be important for them to understand how mortgage rates work. And it's a really simple um, to understand if they know because if they say it's based on the 10-year bond treasury, based on the 10-year treasury, then they don't know because that's really common that you'll hear people say it's based on how the 10-year uh, treasury is trading, which it's not. It's based on the Fannie Mae 30-year bond. Now, sometimes it's they'll be equal, but a lot of times it's completely different. So they just have heard that from someone because you hear a lot of people saying that. Um, so having that conversation with them just gives them an indicator of their uh, knowledge in the mortgage industry. Do they have a team to support them? Is that important for people that do not have a team in the mortgage industry? Does that mean that they do not provide good service? Absolutely not. Is it important um, to you as a referral partner? that your mortgage consultant does have a team. Again, these are just questions to think about and what's important to you and what might be important to your clients and what they want to be asking uh, their mortgage consultant. 
I think this is really fun because I am so surprised at how many people in the mortgage industry do not know that there's a simple calculation to determine principal interest taxes and insurance. It just blows me away, and I know this through my software with Mortgage Triangle Software. It's a simple calculation that's in all my analysis, and every time see, someone sees that analysis on the loan officer side when I'm doing coaching around um, uh, Mortgage Triangle Software, I get shocked reactions all the time, and they're like, wow, that's really cool. There's a pertinent, oh, I never thought about that. So, which to me, it's a simple thing in our industry and in understanding that there is a per 10,000 calculation, which makes it really easy for you to educate clients on loan options and how it affects their payment and every 10,000 in price. And you guys know this because I've gone through my analysis uh, many times. But that's the question. It's a fun question just to see how a mortgage consultant would respond to that question, whether they're going to pull out their calculator or what they're going to um, do. Do they have a software to educate on loan options? I think this is crucial. Is it important for a consumer to get more than one loan option? Yes. I believe that 100%. And it's very rare, it's a very few in the industry actually do an analysis for clients. And it's important that they know their options so they, they know that they've made the right decision for themselves. And, and I've talked about this many times with you guys, so I won't spend too much time on it. But is it okay to give your client the best option that's available to them because you know this is going to be the program that fits their financial goals the best? Yes, it is, but to the consumer to be able for them to be able to know that they've looked at all their options so they're not second guessing what they've chosen, that's really what we're here for. We're here to educate clients on their loan options and you have to have a software that enables you to do it to where the clients understand what their options are. Um, for a consumer to ask for multiple options if they're doing a lower down payment, uh, give them comparisons of all their lower down payments. If they're doing a 20% down, just comparing fixed versus arm, just let them know to just ask for comparisons, three to five different comparisons, and that will answer the question of whether they um, have the ability to educate clients on loan options. What's the cost for pre-approval? Um, there shouldn't be a cost, uh, any commitment for moving um, forward. Uh, obviously, it's uh, education um, should be the, uh, the answer to that. How long does it take to close on a loan? It's a good conversation to have this, to see their confidence uh, in their closing ability, uh, closing on, on a, a purchase loan. Do they have any closing guarantees? So this is a great question. My guess is probably, I don't know, maybe 5% or less have a closing guarantee. Is there something that they have in writing that backs that they're going to close their loan on time? All of you know that I have a $1,000 closing guarantee on a 30-day close. Now, there are restrictions to meet uh, where we'll pay that $1,000, but that is the benefit of a closing guarantee. It is communicating with the client up front that we're going to do this together as a team and what we need from them, as well as what we're going to do on our side to make sure that everything closes on time. And those are the questions that I would encourage uh, for yourself to share with your buyers that they can ask uh, their mortgage consultant. And if you guys need any clarification on those or you have additional questions for me, uh, again, I just encourage to share what you guys want to hear in Mortgage Minutes and share what you're experiencing out there in the mortgage industry, good or bad. If you guys are experiencing things that are unique, um, Cheryl Steffen, thank you so much for, uh, she's always sending me little nuggets uh, emails that she was receiving from another mortgage consultant on videos in, in the closing process, little clip, uh, generic, generic, generic videos. And thanks to that, it's inspired me to do my closing timeline videos, which I'm in green screen. Cheryl, they're not done yet because <laughs> um, one of my uncomfortable things, as you guys know, is video. So getting in green screen is taking it to a whole other level. But Cheryl, I'm uh, committing to you. I would definitely have those done by the end of first quarter, and I'll share those with you guys. So um, let me know what you're seeing out there that's unique and special to the relationships that you're experiencing on the mortgage side so that I can continue to better my service um, and better my um, experience for your clients. And that's what I have to share today. All right. All right, Tina. Thank you very much. You're uh, welcome. Anybody have any questions or? Oh, there is one from Heidi here. Hold on. It says, "What happens when buyers lock too early and they miss the closing date?" 
That's a really great question, Heidi, and it's not a very fun position to be in. It's completely different depending on the lender, but there are costs associated, and that's that's kind of a tricky one because you want to um, you want to lock if you know that the bond market is trading at a negative and the interest rates are really low. You want to be able to have that opportunity to lock, but where the risk can come in is, is in, in a home inspection when the home inspection hasn't taken place yet, and then there's going to be additional work that has to be done on the property, and now you're at, you've got an issue with your lock. Um, and I've had that happen to myself, to where the clients have made a decision to lock because they know they can, but it was before the inspection, and so then you've got to go through. There's there's a cost associated to extending the lock. Um, in most companies, you can only extend for a certain period of time. 15 days is, is the most common to where you can't extend more than that, and then you've got to break the lock, and then you're going to relock at worst case pricing. So it's kind of a, um, and maybe what I'll do is I'll bring that in, Heidi. Thank you for the question. I'll bring that into Mortgage Minutes next week, and I'll talk about locking. I'll talk about different lock periods, when you're in a position to lock, uh, and I'll answer that question in more detail, Heidi, uh, at Mortgage Minutes next Wednesday. So make sure you guys tune in if that's something that you're interested in. You're welcome, Heidi. Terrific. Thank you. It's got